All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got another Jesse Lee Peterson interview in the building today. I'm sure it'll be amazing and hopefully a doozy, but I'll give my input and perspective at the end. Let's get it popping. Are most black Americans suffering due to racism or the lack of more character? Well, it, 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 it is a false equivalency. It is neither. It is. So they're not suffering is, due to racism. It is both. And they're it not is suffering. more than both. But you, you give me too many answers. That's all you can get, though. I mean, everything is not a soundbite. There, there are no, some things. No, I want to know, that, is it yet, are they suffering due to racism or the lack of moral character? It is not either or. It so is they're both. not suffering due to racism and they're not suffering due it, to the it lack is, of moral character. It is both and and some more. Does racism affect black employment? Yes. Uh, are there other things that affect, affect black employment? Certainly there are. Racism is one of them. Uh, perhaps some character issues depending on who the person is. Let me, let me go back to this. First, I want to say that racism doesn't exist. It's an illusion. What do you say about that? I say that's silly. You say that's silly? Yes, sir. Why do you say it's silly? Well, I've been called names enough to know that racism exists. But that could be because they just hated you. They made a judgment and they hate you, not because of your color, they just hate you. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's hard to swallow. <laughs> do you ever have fights with family members? No, I refuse. But, you know, family members do fight, right? Sure. And uh, is that racist? Ooh, not necessarily, no. And so why is it that when blacks and whites fight is racism? You're oversimplifying reality. Does the Bible say that we have a race issue or a spiritual issue? I think the biggest problem with us when it comes to race relations is not skin, but sin. And so that issue of our problem starts on the inside. It's a person's heart. And so the Bible says that we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places. Yes. Meaning that it has nothing to do with skin color. It has nothing to do with male and female. It's good versus evil. Am I right about that? I believe you're right about that. So then why should children of God go along with the children of the lie and call it racism when it's really not racism, something that we doesn't exist, never has existed, and, and because it doesn't exist, we can't solve it. You, Why not call you, it what it is so we can... You actually think racism has never existed? Right. Do you think you could trace your family history back to a thing called slavery, or is that my imagination? I can. As a matter you, of fact, so you don't I, think slavery was we racism? We all can. No. You weren't, your parents... Because there were black people who owned slaves no, as that's well. That's not my point. The point is, why were you a slave? Because they just happened to own me. But it, let me it, tell you But this. it had nothing to do with your race. Well, well, is, no. is there a reason why the preponderance of slaves in America, they were just accidentally black? But or? you know, white people have been enslaved as well by other of whites, course. right? And then blacks have been enslaved by other blacks. In, in parts of Africa, right. they're still Is uh, that yeah. racism? Well, probably not, no. I, yes or no? I said probably not. I know, but I need a yes or no. You're a Pick pastor, one. so uh -huh. I, I want to try to help people. Yeah, I understand that. Is but, that racism when black? When blacks enslave, enslave other, other blacks. blacks. Yeah. Uh, it can be racism, sir. When That's blacks the issue. enslave other blacks? It can be, yes. How is that? I'm black, you're black, I take you to the white slaveholder because you're black. That's racism on my part and his. But we're not talking about white on black ra uh, slavery. In Africa, black on black. Yeah. Slavery, no white people uh -huh. around. Yeah. Is that racism? It can be. But is it? You'll have to check his heart. I don't know. <laughs> the reality is indecisive the ponderance. The most of white on black slavery was racism. How do you if, know if that? you read if you read the writings, if you read the diaries, if you check the historical statements made by the folks who held the slaves, the disrespect, the disregard. But, making them uh, three black fifths, did other making black them, worse than making that. them not a person, then three fifths of a person. Uh, that is racism. It was institutionalized, codified right there in no, the Constitution. No, that was for the power of the oh, vote. Of course it was, but it's still racism, no, it's regardless not. of what your motive is. Let me it's move racism. on. Um, right. Morality. I say that most black Americans suffer, are suffering not because of racism, but the lack of moral character. Most blacks are immoral. Do you disagree with that? I think that's a stupid statement, sir, with all due respect. <laughs> and do you disagree? I definitely disagree, yes. And why do you disagree? Well, to say that most blacks are immoral, uh, I, I disagree because it 
compares it, it by by virtue of, uh, of of the context in which you say it. It is in comparison to whites. I think that's what you're saying. I wasn't thinking that way, but okay. Well, I mean, you have to have some context. But to you it. disagree with me, right? Oh yes. Uh, Seventy. Two percent of black babies are born out of wedlock today. And what's is the percentage that, of white babies is born? Is that out of, immoral? What percentage of white babies are born of wedlock? Answer my question. First. I happen to know. But is that immoral? It's definitely immoral. So then, so these blacks who are having these babies are carrying out, uh, performing an immoral act, right? Uh huh. Am I right? Yes. Uh, black on black crime, out of control in most of the cities. Is that immoral? I couldn't call that necessarily immoral. It's not immoral. Why it not? depends on what you, what crime, who, how, who's participating what? in it, how many people. <laughs> you know, you went from the one about the babies and you left a question unanswered. What was that? The majority of white babies are also well, born out of Why are you bringing up whites when we're talking about blacks? Well, because why are you picking on blacks? I'm not. <laughs> Why, I'm not why, picking why, on black. I mean, it's, I it's an American you because I'm problem. To help black See, why are we talking about racism then? Because it's an American problem, How's not it, a black it's problem. It's not an American problem. It is an American problem. How's the majority that? of babies in America now are born out of wedlock. But see, we're talking about the issues of black Americans today. And how are you going to help them if you justify their bad behavior? Oh, nobody's justifying. By pointing out what white people are doing because blacks are already blaming everybody else for their problems instead of themselves, so they're not getting better. Uh -huh. And so that's why I brought you here, to make them focus on themselves uh -huh. and stop talking about what the white man is doing. Okay. Uh, black people who are focusing on yourself, stop. But no, you are pointing out, right. when I ask you about immorality and all this stuff, you right. pointed out what no the white man No accountability. No, no, I, I only did it because you are, by definition, comparing black people to whites. I'm not. No, he's well, not. By definition. <laughs> no, I'm not comparing them, them at all. I'm talking, you about, saying, uh, you, I'm you talking know, about the way that God want us to live as a people if we want to survive on earth. Mm. Pastor Chuck Singleton. Interesting. Very interesting. I need a minute to digest and take in my, my thoughts and calibrate, and then we're going to talk about it. And I don't know if I would take it as far as saying racism doesn't exist because I think it absolutely does in isolated situations and it can happen to any ethnicity. That's a fact to me. You may disagree. Let me know why in the comments section, but let's establish something. The slavery, it goes all the way back to when Moses parted the Red Sea and helped free the Israelites from the Egyptians. So more than likely, anyone watching this video, including myself, has had ancestors that were slaves at some point across the board. But in no way, shape or form does that hinder my work ethic or ability to su succeed today. And it surely isn't stopping you either, no matter what pigmentation you're rocking. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. But I do respect that the fact that they had a very open minded discussion uh, and the, the way to stop racism is stop talking about it in 2022 and so on in, in the entire narrative and smash it. I think it was Morgan Freeman that said that you want to stop racism, stop talking about it. And I couldn't agree more. And uh, thank you to Jesse for having an open, calm, logical conversation. Thank you to the pastor as well, even though he kept trying to flip the script and, and change the, the, the subject and answer a question with a question. He couldn't just give a yes or no. And I hate that when you're in there to have an interview and somebody asks you a question, just give them, give it to them straight. Just say yes or no. I'm not, I'm not going to bash you for your point. You're entitled that, that free will, that, that perspective. That's what God bless us all with the unique ability to make our own decisions. So although I may think you're, you're wrong and off the rocker, that's okay. You're entitled that right. But this is how I wish everyone would debate and have logical conversations. We'd move a whole lot further along in society if this was the case. A lot of people nowadays love to cling on to that critical race theory and systemic racism. Critical race theory is a complete myth. Nobody's born with white pigmentation, let's say, even though I'm a quarter black, really doesn't matter what at the end of the day, I could be yellow, green, purple, don't matter. Nobody's born with an inherent gene to, to hate somebody based on how they look or what, what pigmentation, whatever you want to uh, label it as. Nobody's born with that trait to hate. They're taught that racism and hate and, and evil is taught and picked up, whether you're looking at your parents, your, your grandparents, who you grow up with, whether you go to public school or, or your home school, you pick up what you see in society. And there's a lot of evil going on in society, a whole lot of lack of diving into the Bible, the good book, the basic instructions before leaving earth. People got this thing dusty. They need to blow it off, pick it up off the, the library shelf, or just go, go invest in one if you don't have one in your home and dive into it. That's how you learn moral principles. And it, it would definitely help if you had a mother and father in the home. It, like the best way, the best start anyone can have in life is to have two parents in the house that believe in Christ. That, that's how God will show the parents how to show love to their children and support them and, and have both of them, father and mother, 
showing that uh, and instilling that child with discipline, with with strong moral values, with respect, with with love and generosity, instead of a, a single mother trying to raise a man, especially when a child gets to like puberty age, those teenage years, you need another man. You need a, a father figure, a, a role model to look up to and tell you like, no, son, this is how you're supposed to look at it. This is how you overcome that that sin, that lust and those things that are going through your head and how to instill respect into that child. Because a mother, I was raised by a single mother. I had a stepfather, but he was an alcoholic. My father is basically just a donor. So my mom raised me and I turned out fine in the long run. I, I'd like to say so, but I, I went through a whole lot of trial and tribulation and my wife put me on the path of the Lord. My wife directed me to the to Jesus Christ and showed me the sacrifice that he made for all of our sin. So a lot of people don't get to have that example. A lot of people may not stumble across that that soulmate, that that spouse, because they're they're out there trying to chase women, chase men, whatever the case may be. But I was blessed. You you can avoid that if you one, get married first before you decide to have children and lay it down. Be responsible. Raise those those children up in a, in a loving home. Try to be on the same page in everything you possibly can, especially faith. If you're not on the same page with your faith, it's going to be a messy and slippery slope. I kind of got off on a tangent. What I wanted to talk about is systemic racism and how there wouldn't be any free black folks whatsoever in today's day and age if systemically it was racist. You wouldn't see people like, like Shaq, like B.I.G., like Tupac, like Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson. Wouldn't be no Denzel Washington. And certainly Certainly not Barack Obama, the, the leader of the free world, the president who served two terms, not just one, two terms. And he divided race relations even more. So what does that tell you about systemic racism and like the evil in people's heart? You could be black, white, uh, Asian, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Latino, whatever you want to label it as. And if you got hate in your heart, society is going to be divided. Your relationships are going to fail and crumble based on the hate and the, the animosity that you're pushing instead of the love and, and looking out for your neighbor. Do unto others as you want done unto you. The golden rule, love others the way you want to be loved. Love God first and foremost and love your neighbor. At the end of the day, it's really simple. There's one race, the human race, and you got to stop labeling these things and you got to start just loving on people. No matter what they're going through, no matter where you're at in life, love through it. That's how you overcome these obstacles and situations that God's going to place in front of you. He's going to test you. He's going to see how strong your faith is. And you got to set a good godly example and be a godly influence to those around you. Because no matter who you think's looking at you, whether you got a platform like YouTube or you're, you're just at home, you think nobody's looking at you, you're you're going to influence somebody along the line. Your children, your grandparents, your cousins, your 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 spouse, your your relatives, people in society that you, you may not know are looking at you, you're going to influence somebody. So lead a godly life, be an example, be the light. And that's the way we overcome all this nonsense and all these false rhetorics that are being pushed today. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know I like to dive into that good book. I got to hit y'all with some biblical soul food before we wrap this video up. First Thessalonians 5 verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. And then the last one, because I know some of y'all, for whatever reason, don't like scripture, but that's truth. That's foundation. Build your life and everything on that rock. Don't build it on sand. Build it on a firm foundation, the firmest of truths, which is the Bible. Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16, which just happens to go along with the shirt I'm wearing today. Yes, this was planned. Be the light. It can be found on my wife's Etsy store, but Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So don't try to curl up in a ball. Don't try to hide behind these, these false labels and rhetorics. Go out there, be a light, be a godly example, love people the way you want to be loved and spread fruitfulness, spread kindness, spread joy, spread happiness. The world will be a whole lot better place. Stop, stop clinging on to these ideas, these way old historical things that everybody's sinned. Everybody has fallen short of the grace of God in the past. That's why he sent Jesus to take on all the sin in the world, all the evil. Jesus beat death. Jesus is perfection. When you look to that and you try to strive towards that perfection that is Jesus, when you're a true Christian, it all is washed away. It's all washed clean. And we all can move forward instead of clinging on to the rear view mirror. Stop looking back. You can't take none of the stuff with you. Can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse. None of the ideas and ideologies and critical race nonsense that people are pushing. It, it does nothing to fuel society forward. Latch on to love and keep on moving. And I know I just hit y'all with a mouthful of long rant that might not have made any sense at all. Let me know what didn't down below. I'd love to talk about it. If you do like what I'm doing over here, you like the godly values and principles we stand on and, and that I'm always going to keep it to scripture. Hit that like button. 
button, subscribe, notification bell if you're new so you stay up to date on all future videos. Shout out to Jesse and that pastor right there for just a nice, calm conversation, sharing ideas. I disagree with the pastor, but it is what it is. We're all entitled to our own opinion. Get this in front of other people, and hopefully this can help somebody out there. And if you want to support the channel even further, as I mentioned, you can always buy this Be The Light shirt on my wife's Etsy store. She makes it handmade in the house. I appreciate the support she does as well. You can buy me a coffee. You can donate on PayPal. Join the Patreon family. Tap the little thanks button on YouTube. You don't got to do any of that at all. Just allow my freckle face to take over your screen for a few minutes. I'm forever grateful for the support. I appreciate y'all. Until next time, I'm praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.